first story is titled, Am I the a-hole for not paying for my cousin's wedding despite ruining it by having a mental health crisis? My favorite cousin was supposed to get married last year, but postponed to this year with only close family and friends invited, a total of 30 people. I was excited to go, as I live alone and my parents died when I was in college, so I try to make family a priority when I can. At the wedding, my aunts kept picking at me for being single, as family does when you get to your mid-twenties with no partner, and something in my brain apparently broke. I don't fully understand what happened, but I started crying, just inconsolable weeping. I remember slumping to the ground crying, but after that, it's like my brain just shut off. I don't remember saying anything, but according to my relatives in the hospital, I kept rocking and crying. The next thing I remember, I was in the hospital feeling very calm. They kept me overnight, but released me saying it was just a panic attack. My cousin's wedding did not go well because of, well, that happening. In a wedding with 30 people, one person having a not minor mental health crisis is very hard to cover up or hide, and it derailed the events. She and her new husband are now raging that I ruined their wedding, and now owe them the cost of the wedding. I said no. I didn't intentionally ruin their wedding. I had a terrifying mental health incident that I am seeking care for. I've never had anything like that happen before. I get nervous sometimes, but it's never been like that. I don't even like crying in front of people. I am trying to seek therapy, but the closest appointment I can get is six months from now. Also, I don't have the money to pay for an entire wedding. Yes, I have savings, but I have to save that for the possibility of something happening in my own life because I'm the only person I really have. Obviously, the breakdown that happened at her wedding was over emotional way of putting it. But the truth is that I am unlikely to ever find someone. I'm 25 years old. I have to take time to get my mental health in check. And even if I was 100% fine, there's no way for me to meet anyone now anyway. I only have myself. Everyone in my family has partners and a family. I'm completely alone. I mean, I even had to Uber home from the hospital because I don't even have parents anymore as they passed three years ago, and you don't get closer to your cousins by going crazy around them. They are now threatening me with being cut out of the family. I told them they were only proving my point, and have put everyone on mute since. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Everyone sucks here. You don't owe them the cost of the wedding. That's ridiculous. If a guest had a heart attack at the wedding, I doubt they would ask them for money. Your complete breakdown did ruin their day, though. Added to Ed, if you didn't want your mental health remarked on, then the post should have read, Am I the a-hole for not paying for my cousin's wedding when I had a medical emergency during the event? However, friends and family lose their sympathy quickly when an ill person or addict will not get help. The way you described the wedding event suggests that you need professional help with this ASAP. Already needed it prior to this, really. You say you are trying to seek therapy, but there are many therapy options even in COVID, and your family may be reaching their breaking point supporting you. Leave them aside for the moment and focus on getting yourself the help you need. Yes, I agree with this. OP, you say nothing like this has happened before, but it sounds like you had mental health problems before that perhaps you weren't taking care of. You're catastrophizing even in the post. There's no way for me to meet anyone now anyway. This is just ridiculous. You're 25. You don't live on Mars. You have access to the internet and presumably a job. Get the help you need. Okay, I'm going with a very gentle, everyone sucks here. Your aunts suck for picking on you for being single. At 25, you are not an old crone. You absolutely have time to find someone. Not that there's an age limit on love. My great-grandpa got remarried at 86. Also, it's rude as hell to make fun of people for their relationship status at any age. Your cousin sucks for expecting you to reimburse the whole wedding. That is ridiculous. Everyone that isn't you sucks for not removing you from the situation. You should have been escorted from the room to get some space and allow the rest of the guests and the bride and the groom to continue enjoying themselves. You suck for two things. Your attitude and love. Seriously, at 25, you are not destined to always be alone. Get a grip. And for not leaving the space when you started crying. I have had many panic attacks, and I've been able to leave the space before breaking down. Obviously, everyone's mental health is different, but once it was clear you were getting very upset, you should have excused yourself. Again, this is a gentle, everyone sucks here, because panic attacks can catch you off guard, especially if this was your first. 
Not day hole for not paying, not day hole for an unavoidable crisis. But your whining about being single makes me think you aren't actually being apologetic to them and are taking a woe me attitude. You did ruin their wedding, and your breakdown is what everyone is going to remember about it. The least you could do is not make the aftermath about you too. Now for the next story. Am I the a-haul for calling my mommy terrible parent and temporarily running away after learning she listens to my therapy sessions? A little bit of context. I-17 male and just started therapy because I was feeling incredibly overwhelmed and I relapsed into some bad habits. My mother, 48 female, is quite the traditional woman and it took a lot of convincing because she thinks therapy is for crazy people. Anyways, I have been talking to my therapist for about a month now, and it's really helped me open up about a certain thing I wasn't comfortable with, like my dad's alcohol addiction, etc. My mom and dad are separated. So one day, I mentioned that my mom can be a little too much, and she forces me so much I cry myself into sleep for weeks because she keeps criticizing me. After I came home from that, my mother was looking a little angry, and I asked her what happened. She started screeching that I was an ungrateful brat, and that if I have a problem with her, I should say it to her face. She then started to call me some horrible names, and saying that I didn't appreciate her enough, that I'm, and I quote, nothing like she imagined me growing up. That was the last straw. I just got angry, and told her she was a terrible mom, and packed my bags to crash at a friend's house not far away. By the way, my friend is okay with it. She knows sometimes my household isn't safe, and she's very welcoming. So, I actually have been thinking, and I think I might be a little bit of an a-hole here, because I do feel ungrateful, and I do think that she might have been a little right. After all, she escaped from my abusive dad, and I feel like I might overreacted by leaving her for now, but this is eating me alive. Edit. I don't know how she heard what I said at the therapy session, but knowing her and my past experiences, it is very likely she snooped around at purpose. Not an a-hole. At all. Therapy is private time to talk about what hurts your mental health. It was way out of line for her to listen, and even more so to lash out at you for it. Do you know how she listened in? Not day hall. Please inform your therapist of what happened. Not day hall. Your mother was absolutely wrong from start to finish here. One, criticizing you to the point that you cry yourself to sleep. Two, spying on your therapy sessions. Not sure how this happened but it is a horrifying invasion of privacy. Three, blowing up at you for your feelings. You are entitled to your feelings and to express them, even if someone wishes you felt differently. Four, insulting you and telling you that you're nothing like she imagined. That is wildly unacceptable, arguably abusive behavior. This behavior sounds like that of someone who is emotionally abusive. You mentioned that your father was also, but that doesn't rule out her being mistreating to you. You, in contrast, have been great. You did all the right things, from talking to your therapist to leaving the house when the mistreatment escalated. Your mother is supposed to care for and protect you, that instead, she's hurting you. You should be damn proud of the fact that you are caring for and protecting yourself, and keep doing it. That guilt you feel? That's the desired consequence of her manipulative, abusive behavior. Acknowledge it and then reject it as BS. You're good, kiddo. Keep taking care of yourself. You deserve it. Not day hole. Therapy sessions are confidential for exactly this reason. So you feel safe discussing any topic you wish without the fear of any repercussions. What your mother did was a horrible violation of your privacy and your trust, and, ironically, proved the point you were making to your therapist. The next story is titled, Am I the a hole for refusing to attend my brother's funeral? So, some background. I-23 female had an older brother, Lance. He was eight years older than me and he absolutely despised me. Ever since the day I was born, he hated my guts and set out to make me as miserable as possible. Reason being was because he hated having a sibling, especially a sister, and was happy being an only child. To say that he was a bully is a major understatement. Our parents initially ignored it as they thought it was just normal sibling rivalry. But when I was five, they finally looked into his behavior and tried their very best to correct it. Nothing worked, though. He got only worse and worse and meaner and meaner. One incident stands out in my mind. I was six. He locked me out of the house when there was a tornado warning. Out of all the things he's done to me, that was the worst. 
because there actually was a tornado on the ground and it almost hit our neighborhood. When I was 10, he graduated high school and moved out. The last thing he said to me before he left was that I was worthless and would amount to nothing. Thankfully, that was the end of his days of bullying me. In the past 13 years that have passed since Lance moved out, we've only seen each other on a couple of occasions, one of which being his wedding, and he ignored me in all of them. Didn't even acknowledge my presence. He has two sons, who I don't even know or were even introduced to. He told me that I would never amount to anything and was worthless. Well, I'm in nursing school hoping to fulfill my dream of becoming a nurse, and I have a wonderful doting boyfriend. Well, two weeks ago, I got a phone call from my mom. Lance was coming home from work and he lost control of his car and wrapped it around a streetlight. By the time the ambulance got there, he was already gone. I only felt heartbroken for my parents because you should never have to bury your child, but I felt nothing towards him. I made it clear to my parents that I was not going to Lance's funeral. Not after his years of bullying, they were not happy. They begged me to go, saying that I need to be the bigger person. He's dead and can't hurt me anymore. I need to be there for them and I don't know the pain of losing a child. I understood how they felt, but he never once apologized for all this years of mistreatment. Not one word of remorse or regret. They tried insisting that he was a changed person, but I stood my ground and did not go. My abuser did not deserve my grief or my presence. If he had apologized, then I might have attended, but it didn't. My parents were absolutely furious that I did show up and announced that they will never speak to me again, and they haven't since. My boyfriend stands by my decision, but I've been getting nothing but backlash from other family members saying I should have just swallowed my pride and went to Lance's funeral. So am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. He is gone now. You never owed him anything. Not attending his funeral has changed your relationship with your parents. He was their son, but he wasn't your brother, and I hope that someday they can understand why you chose not to attend. This is the hill you chose to die on, so be prepared to not speak with your parents for some time. A dead a hole is still a nay hole, not a hole. Not a hole. It was nearly no a holes here, but your parents choosing to lose both children over this tipped the scale. Funerals are for the living. Your parents needing your support there isn't a surprise. They are grieving in a way that isn't comprehensible to those who have never experienced such a loss. You, though, have zero obligation to go to your brother's funeral. In time, I hope your parents come back around and they process their grief. Opie's parents' actions make it fairly obvious he was the golden child and she was the scapegoat. Even in death, he is more important than Opie. Are they really willing to lose you too over this? Then not they hall because they obviously don't care a bit about you. They were willing to risk losing her when they chose not to protect her the first five years of her life, or do anything when he tried to wed her as a little girl. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for making my 19-year-old cry because I said we have nothing in common, and that's why we aren't close? My daughter 19 and I, 40 female, live together. She's in online college, so home all the time. We are total opposites. I am a girly girl, she is a sweats and throw hair up in a bun type. She is into anime, which I try to watch with her, but it's the most annoying thing ever. She also loves comics, so I did learn about them when she was younger. Basics like Supergirl and Superman are cousins, etc. So we sort of talk about that, but it's hard because she knows so much and I don't. I used to do a mother-daughter book club with her, but she kind of didn't want to do that when she was in high school. So the other day, she said she wanted to talk. She said she was upset that we didn't have a mother-daughter bond. I told her I love her very much, and I'm sorry she feels like that. She said other mothers are super close to their daughters, and I pointed out that they have common interests, do spa days, make up together, etc., and we don't have that much in common. She started crying and won't talk to me. My ex called and yelled at me, saying I'm a horrible person, takes her to fix furnaces and stuff and suggested I do stuff like that, and I told him I barely know what a furnace looks like and can barely use a hammer, so it's a bit hard to bond over home improvement. My cousin also called and yelled at me. I feel bad but I have tried, and I love her and support her, so I'm not sure what else I can do. Am I the a-hole? You're the a-hole. 
If you had followed up that you have nothing in common with, but let's work together to explore things we both like and do those things as mother slash daughter, then my opinion may have been different. No a holes here. If most of your activities aren't for her and vice versa, as you detailed above, there is a third option. That said, no one is forcing you to be close, but if it's something you both want, then it seems that you have some work to do. Just my opinion. No one is forcing you to be close. I mean, she is her mom, so she does have an obligation as a parent to have a healthy bond with her daughter. You're the a-hole. You're not the a-hole because you struggle to find things in common with your teenage daughter. You're the a-hole because your daughter desired something meaningful and relevant, she reached out to you and expressed herself maturely and respectfully, and you shot her down with a flimsy, and frankly lazy, excuse. Your child made herself vulnerable to you, and you dismissed her because she's boring to you. Not your exact words, I know, but I guarantee that's how it came across. Go back to your daughter and say something along the lines of our conversation through me because we're interested in such different things. Let's find a way to make that work for us. Let's plan something around, insert one of her interests here, then we'll try insert one of your interests. Make an effort as her mother. Don't be lazy about this. Or they could make a list of new interests that they can explore together. Things that neither of them is currently involved in, so that is not a my interests versus your interests struggle. It sounds like the daughter likes working with her hands and mom is a girly girl. Maybe there's an art or a craft that they could both learn? And that's the end of this video, folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos. And I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.